Okay, um, I was asked how this batch modification actually works, and I really think that the concept behind of it uh, is is really underestimated by most of the security people. So even Travis Goodspeed did a great talk. Read it; it's packet in packet, and this is an amazing talk. And basically, we use that technique to to identify um, Nordic semiconductor-based communication devices. Um, just. As a side note, that's used, for example, in uh, wireless keyboards. And there is one secret, a device identifier, which is uh, five bytes in the case of keyboards. And if you know that and the channel, you can communicate with the device without anything else, just by using the same chip and configuring it properly. Now, <clears throat> I just said that you need about five bytes for the device uh, bytes. And that's my slide, and basically what a radio pattern looks like. Normally in the analog world, it started like something, and then you have something like a swinging pattern, and then data modulation takes place. In the digital world, a world they ported that basically, keeping first the signal at a certain state, and then they do the exact the same thing. It's just high, low, high, low, whatever. Or the other way around, so low, high, low, high, low, high. So if you look at that pattern, that's basically always AA or 5.5. Five. So a packet usually starts always with 5.5 five or AA in hex, and then adding data, whatever. Now, that chip is configured to actually detect automatically packets that are using those device addresses, which are usually in here, 5 bytes. So even if the chip is crappy and cheap, it's easy to filter out five bytes out of the whole high-speed to megabit com uh, communication on low-cost radio. But it's really hard if you want to do that, for example, for just one byte or two bytes, because there is a lot of noise going on out there. But uh, Nordic Semiconductor did something maybe on purpose, maybe on error. There is an illegal setting which was uh, discovered by Travis, actually, during uh, discussions about our Kikiriki um, and uh, keyboard uh, sniffer stuff. He actually tried to set the illegal settings within the manual. That's, um, it specifies that you can choose either three, four, or five byte device addresses. And there is one setting which is illegal. And this actually allows you to set two bytes as a device address. Now, the oldest trick in the world is, well, if we try to find a pattern right in before that one, we might be able to get the whole packet, not only what is in here, because the chip is actually detecting the device address, and as a developer, you'd only get access to the data, to the real data in here. So by tricking now the chip configuration into well, just look for two bytes, and I would like to look for 0055. Please look for packets with that device address. Actually, this works. This is no bug, but it's illegal from the documentation. But what happens is uh, the chip gets a lot of noise. I mean, there are a lot of patterns in there in the whole communication, which seems like a valid packet. But the cool thing is, that the chip actually actually does the whole demodulation stuff and everything, and you get all the rest of the information as it would be data. But in there is the, the real device address. And remember, that's one of the secrets and the channel. So what we did actually is just configuring the existing chip to match and look for that pattern, and then took the rest as data take a look at it, find some pattern which look reasonable, comparing multiple times, and you immediately find some devices out there uh, which look reasonable. In fact, at least five byte lengths, because there are five byte device addresses. And that's exactly what the device does. It looks for patterns. If it finds it at a certain channel, it, the LCD displays the device address and the channel number, and you can take that information and just reconfigure it to that settings and you can communicate then on the protocol level and not on the radio level anymore. So there is no need for sniffer anymore because 
you got all it takes to communicate, let's say, legally with the device. So that was it. What it was, what the code actually is doing. That's possibly the cheapest way to get up to speed with Nordic semiconductor sniffing. And yeah, the a side effect is the raw packets will be dumped to the serial port as well on the batches. So I will uh, send you later on the the code, and it will be published maybe, and everyone can do that. The modules are available from SparkFun for a few dollars. And then you can at least analyze um, Nordic semiconductor-based communication up to two megabit. And I mean, the idea is not from 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 myself. So Travis actually is uh, having credit for identifying that thing, and I really uh, suggest that you read his rest of the paper, packet in packet, because that same technique allows you. Uh, the same technique can be applied also to data in Ethernet frames or whatever, uh, because if you manage to to basically do something like 0055 in this case and your own payload in a valid frame, which is larger because the chip adds that again, you know, and device address then it's pretty obvious that you actually can inject in nearly every radio communication system, which is a really old hack and has been done multiple times. The only, the only uh, thing you have to take care of that you invalidate the first part of the packet by jamming, by sending too many bytes, by just overflowing the channel, whatever. And the chip will automatically uh, think that's not a valid packet starts continue listening on the radio and will identify immediately a new start packet. And that's actually your packet. And the, the, the paper goes far beyond what I just told because uh, it's also possible to cross media boundaries by sending packets inside some, I don't know, Ethernet frames, but targeting a specific radio communication. So it's not even focused on a specific media. But it's basically the same trick. And I guess it's rather simple so for everyone to just look at Nordic semiconductor-based communication systems. Thank you.